And so uh, Ish Smith is feeling better. Probably going to be out for sure next game, but maybe maybe the next few games, but don't know for sure. But we all we did watch film and go through a walkthrough and watch film of last night, watch Boston and went through a walkthrough and that was it. The guys got work before and then after. Anybody else? Chase, go ahead again. Scott, um, obviously, it's been a tough season for Davis Bertans, uh, and he's not making the threes that we're used to seeing him make. Um, just what sense do you get from how he's uh, feeling as he tries to work through these struggles? Oh, well, I mean, he definitely wants to make them. I mean, he's not trying to miss shots. Uh, we're trying to figure out ways to help him. Um, it's always tough when you got a, a big time shooter not making shots. A lot of times you're best not saying anything. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we know his heart's in the right place. He wants to make them. He's not, he's not getting, uh, he's not getting them to fall down uh, throughout the game. He's had some moments, he has some streaks, he has some first halves. Uh, he's going to keep working. He's not going to, he's not going to get it, give in to a bad shooting start. I still believe in his what he brings to our team. I mean, we need it. Uh, we need it pretty quickly, and we need it consistently. Um, I still believe in what he can bring to us. But we need to make. We, we all need. I mean, it seems like the last ten or twelve games we haven't been able to to make uh, any threes consistently. Uh, goes from I think top to bottom. It's very rare you have the entire team in a in a tough shooting uh, slump, but it's um, we're going to keep working. We had a, guys are in early today and they're staying after today and trying to figure out how to get out of it. But the only way to get out of it is by just keep working and keep believing in it and, and staying confident as, as best you can. Ava. Hey, Scott, um, on that note of confidence, you've kind of spoken about that before. How, I guess, how much do you have to worry about that? Like, is there a, a, a worry that if you address it too much, you're like, okay, I don't want to hammer these guys so much with like, stay up, stay up, stay up. Or how do you, I guess, how do you figure out how much to talk about it with the team? It's very, it's, it's definitely uh, the interesting topic when your guys aren't shooting the ball well, and you know, they're not doing it on purpose. And so you don't want to add more pressure on it. You try different ways to break the ice, to make them feel better and tell them, you know, just don't take anything that you're not 100% wide open. You can lace that ball up and, and be in great balance. And there's some nights where you don't need all that because you're making everything and you can shoot fading to the left, fading to the right. Uh, there's no question that all of us, we want to shoot better. All of us, I mean, down the line, nobody's trying to, uh, make uh, not make shots. And the thing that the it's it's disappointing that you know we we let it affect us too much on the other end on, with our transition defense with our paying attention to detail. And there's you know our defense needs to get better, but we can't you know double down on it when we don't make shots and and not 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 do the things that we need to do. We need all everybody to to get in. Uh, defensively and, and shots should not have anything to do with it, but I feel like sometimes it does with that, with our group, but that's, we have to get, we have to get over it. And like I said, we have to still put the work in and the guys are, we're going to get in a hot streak. I, I still believe it. I, I hope it happens very soon. And um, we talked to Troy and Garrison after the game last night, some of those guys who you always mention are kind of fighting for minutes. What did you take away from their uh, minutes last night? Obviously in a, tough kind of team performance all around? How do you kind of focus in on them? Well, I mean, I, I, I thought, I mean, Garrison plays really, really, really hard. And I think that he wins that game every night. And you know, I can, I know what I'm going to get with his effort every night. And, you know, he's make, 
he's the guy who's made, I mean, he's made four out of 10, 40%. I think he's pretty much been 40% his, his two years that he's been with us. But he puts himself in a position to make those. He's moving, he's cutting, he's not discounting the running on into our spots. He's hungry. Uh, and I, I like the way I like the way he approached the game. He was in our rotate, it wasn't in our rotation, then got in our rotation and and then played kind of like the wild card um, spot the last, you know, extra number of games uh, other than last night. But I like it. Uh, Troy just needs to continue to be uh, consistent. And that's, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's hard when you don't get the consistent minutes, but you have to be able to do it in practice. You have to be able to do it when you do get minutes because five minutes can lead to 10 minutes can lead to more minutes after that. I thought he had some good moments, but I thought he had some uh, tough moments last night. Alex. Hey, Scott, I, I know you talked about hoping to turn things around and get that hot streak soon. Um, with, with Brad coming back from that rest and you guys having these next three games at home, how, how important do you think it is to get that hot streak now before you guys head out west? Uh, it's important, you know, to get a win, get some confidence. This guy, these guys, uh, our group wants to play better and we want to we want to win the games. Uh, having Brad back in the lineup obviously helps. One of the best players in the league, uh, but it's nice to have him back. Uh, it's a tough, it's a tough three games. We got you know Boston, Houston, Detroit. I mean, um, Denver. I mean, that they they are good teams. That they it's going to be. We're going to have to play well, but we're definitely going to have to make some shots. Uh, Brad will help that. Uh, he's been pretty consistent uh, of making you know, scoring for us. And I think that that obviously helps having him back in the lineup. Uh, real follow up real quick. I, I know you mentioned Brad is one of the best in the league. I'm, I, I don't know if you've seen the all star voting recently, but, you know, Brad's pretty high up there. I think at the top for East guards, you know, do, do you think he's finally, you know, getting some of the recognition that that he deserves, you know, league wide and, and you know, through the media and everything? Well, I mean, I know. I, I I know he's an all-star. I've known it for, I thought he's, it's just, it should be going on five years. I thought he was an all-star the first year. Uh, I think they put somebody at the very end. I forget who it was. Um, and then last year, you know, what he did last year to, to, to lead a young group to, to change our whole, you know, our whole culture. And, and he led us and, and still was able to produce. And, and then this year, what he's done is even gotten better. Uh, hopefully the, the voting, uh, remains the same. He's getting recognized and that's a great thing. He deserves it. He puts a lot into, uh, our team. Uh, it's a big part of what we do, uh, now and going forward. I mean, he's the, the best player in the league and one of the best players in the league and for him to be recognized as an all-star would be great. Thank you. Neil. Scott, even before uh, the Knicks game where, you know, obviously they packed the paint a lot. Russell was saying that teams are doing that, you know, to you guys even before that. What are some of the things that you as a coaching staff, whether it be plays run or other things can do to help him out there where if teams are clogging the paint and you guys aren't making shots from deep, what can still be done? Well, we have to make shots. I mean, you, you can go back. I'm sure you guys have much as we have or uh, I'm assuming you guys have you guys can talk about it but if you watch it and see it we, we, we get a lot of good looking uh, threes some of them some of them are really like wide open swing swing great good to great passing those are the ones we have to step up if they're if we're not going to make those every team is going to pack the paint uh, that loosens it up it's it's the uh, the ripple effect. You can you get a, you get a, a transition attack, a paint a paint. We call a paint out spray for a three, and you don't miss those. Those paint attacks are going to be even harder to get. Uh, but when you make them, then the paint attacks become easier. And Russell and Brad and Ish and our playmakers are going to be able to get opportunities at the rim. 
but we have to be able to do that. Um, that's what we have guys do at a high level, and they have to be able to do that. It's not, it's like I said, it's not like they, they don't want to make shots, but we have to start making some of our shots, that, especially the open threes. I mean, the tough ones, uh, I don't see us uh, taking a lot of those, but if we are, those are the ones we're trying to eliminate with more ball movement and, and actions on the weak side. But the open ones, the swing, swing ones, we have to be able to step up and make those. There's no ands, ifs, buts about it. You're going to get open looks, and you got to be able to be, shoot them with confidence. They're working on them every day, and, and we're going to continue to do that. All right, last question to Quentin. Hey, Coach, a lot of the issues you guys have seem to be the same every single night. Is there a concern from a coaching standpoint that guys aren't responding to the game plan that you're putting in place before these games? Uh, no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not concerned with that. I'm concerned with just getting our guys better game the game. And we know what we, we know what we've gone through and hope mm -hmm. to get out of it uh, with some better play. We need to play better. I need to do a better job. Our players need to do a better job collectively as a group. That's what we're about. We talk about it. We've got to continue to work on it. Uh, today, I thought I thought we had one of our better film sessions and better uh, uh, walkthroughs. So, but we need to be able to put it on the on the court. You always want your guys that worked in, on the practice floor to get better because that's where you get that's where you gain confidence. I, I I still see our guys doing that, which is great but we need to have a transfer over on the court. And the game is fast. It moves around fast. And I know we have some players that haven't had a lot of NBA experiences, and these are all a lot of firsts for a lot of guys. But, but still, we have to be able to do it, and we have to be able to do it consistently. And that's definitely the plan. Sorry, one more quick one to Ava. All right. Um, sorry if this is a silly question, Scott. What makes a good film session? Um, we're... There's a, there's a couple of different things that you, you try to get accomplished. One that you're all, we all understand on, on things that we have to get better on correctables. I don't, you don't, you don't put, at least I don't put things in that I'm not asking for players to do things they can't do, but I'm asking them to always be mentally aware. And some of the things uh, that's always one of my coaches say, it's the truth box. Because during games, it happens so fast. The player will tell me something. I will tell them something. I might see something. They might see something different. And a lot of times, uh, we look back on it, the film, and it could be totally different. And, but that, 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 does, that tells you exactly what needs to be done. And with this schedule that we've had, there's not a lot of times we do it before games. We do it as much as we can. But today, we had we have plenty of time. We were in no rush. We weren't going to get it. We weren't going to have a physical practice. It was just a mental practice. So those, to me, that was a good day for us. We, we really, I thought we got better mentally in the right direction to, to give us a better chance to, to compete against one of the best teams in the East. And they've been that way for a while now. Yes. Hey, I will. I uh, just wanted to ask you about practice today and the walkthroughs. How would you describe the film session? Coach Brooks said it was one of the best you guys had of the year. Um, it was good, you know, we have a lot of things to talk about. And uh, I think it was more the talk we had than, than the actual film, because we've got enough mistakes until now that we watch enough film to know what we got to do. But uh, I think the talk we had was, was good. And also, what are the spirits like within the locker room and within the players as you guys have been going through a tough stress so far? I mean, we all competitors. <laughs> Upset when we lose. I think uh, we've been losing a lot, and uh, and um, everybody everybody takes pride on on our job, you know. And, and the locker room sometimes is down, but we always have a voice. We we, we always have somebody that uh, try to bring us up. Um, and honestly, it's been it's been good. Um, besides the losses we've we've had, I think our locker room has been holding us holding up together. And I think that's going to be important uh, going forward from now. Chase. Um, hey, Howell. Um, 
As, as you think about the stuff that you guys have struggled with this year, um, what stands out as the most surprising to you that maybe you thought the team would be better at or that you believe that you can be better at moving forward? I mean, I think I've, I've said that before. We've got a young team that um, has a, a lot of time in this league. And uh, one of the things we talked about today was the it's hard to be consistent on this league. You know, there's so many games, there's uh, different matchups, there's different games. People start uh, uh, guarding you and not letting you do what you like to do. So um, I think that was something I think we got to get better, you know, just being more consistent and know, knowing what we got to do on the, on the court. Um, but, you know, I came here and I knew it's going to be a challenge. I knew. Uh, being a new team, you learn things from from players that you don't know. We try to get everybody better, and and I think uh, uh, there's always things that you don't you don't expect coming to the season, uh, good or bad. So I think it's it's normal. Uh, I think uh, we've been doing a good job at staying together and 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 communicate and holding everybody accountable. So I think uh, we're in the we're in the right way to uh, get over those those bad games we've had. And um, as a veteran point guard, what what have you seen from Cassius Winston so far this season? I know he's not with you guys now, but you know through the first few weeks, months of the season, what what did you see from him? No, oh, he's a guy that likes the challenge. You know, uh, practices uh, since training camp, he's always been uh, confident, very confident for a rookie. You know, and and more for a rookie that uh, didn't play a lot. You know, every practice he was. He was accepting the challenge, guarding me, guarding Russ, Ish, and just doing his best. Uh, he's a good shooter. He's a very smart and intelligent player. And I think, uh, um, I mean, I relate to him a lot because of the size and coming to this league. One of the, the biggest things are always, oh, he's tall enough? Is he strong enough? Can, can he guard uh, one, two, three, uh, those kind of things. But he's a guy that takes the challenge and, uh, and he's tough. Neil. Hey, Howell. Uh, both Scott and Brad have said, you know, when shots aren't falling for you guys on the offensive end, it has a tendency to impact you guys on the defensive end. What would your advice be to younger players to try and not let that happen? I mean, it's a mental game. Uh, you got to defense. You don't have days, you know, it's uh, unless you're hurt or unless you're physically uh, hurt. Uh, defense doesn't have days like offense. Uh, offense, you can have a day that you're off. You can make a shot, and it's a rough night. But defensively, we, you just gotta put your body in the in the position to play hard and and be tough. I think that's uh, we shouldn't let our offense affect our defense. You know, I think the only thing that can affect uh, our defense is bad shots. Because sometimes you take a bad shot, bad shots, and then or matchup going back, it's. Uh, we are struggling on the matchups. You know, we end up having uh, Rob being on a point guard or having me on a big guy because we took a bad shot and they took advantage of that. But I think uh, we shouldn't let our our, our misses uh, on offense affect our defense uh, on the fact that playing hard and, and playing smart and, and taking the challenge. Is that just kind of an easier said than done kind of approach? Because, you know, obviously if you miss a shot, you know, you may feel a little bit low? Uh, yes, for sure. It's like anything mentally, you know, uh, you come into the new year and you say you're going to go to the gym every day of the week and it's harder to, it's harder to do it. You know, uh, those things that, that it's in your mind, it's, uh, it's, it's hard. Um, it's easy to say, like, uh, um, we had a conversation uh, in our practice today and everybody like, agreed but then sometimes on the court it's harder to do it because uh it's such a quick decision that you got to make it's uh following the game plan and following what we what we uh planned before the game uh so yeah for sure it's something that it's easier to say than than do it out there Ava how with the kind of um shooting troubles that you're talking about like it's so clear the kind of difference between the beginning of the season for you guys and then after all of the the COVID stuff for you personally um since you kind of kind of came out shooting hot too what like feels differently for you since you guys are getting good looks is it 
in your legs? Is it something that's up or have you been even able to kind of pinpoint it like that? Yeah, uh, it's funny because uh, we think a lot about it. You know, you, we always try to fix what's not going well. And I think uh, it could be a little bit legs getting back into the rhythm. And, and uh, I think my on, on my end is more um, not thinking too much. I think I'm thinking too much out there when I get an open shot, I'm like hesitating and then those like split a second sometimes change my my form and I think uh, that's something that I gotta do better. I don't know for other guys. I'm pretty sure they are watching film and talking to their coaches and trying to, to fix it. Uh, but it's a confidence thing, you know. Uh, and we've that's the other thing. It's easy to say, but we've talked so much about you know if you have your shot, take it. Don't hesitate. Just just take it. But sometimes in the game, you miss one, you miss two. Uh, the third one doesn't come out the way you want it. So I think it's something we have to keep. Um, talking to each other, you know, keep uh, saying good shot or encourage everybody. So I think it's something that is contagious. I, I'm pretty sure if a couple guys get hot, the whole team is going to get hot. It's something that you miss a shot. The other guy misses a shot. It's something that contagious. And I think the making shots will come.